So as you guys are probably aware, BSG did end up changing the rogue behavior at the end of last wipe. So I wanted to make an updated guide for those of you struggling to deal with them so that you are able to go to the water treatment plant on Lighthouse in order to get your task done. So with this method that I'm going to show you guys, you can use any weapons and ammo that you are comfortable with or that you do have available to you in your stash. And that does include CQB weapons with just a hollow or red dot. Because of how the rogues do end up pushing you now, then you will actually be engaging with them mostly within 20 meters. And if some of the rogues end up getting bugged up on top of the rooftops, as they will sometimes now, then you can always just grab one of the rogue AK-104s that do have a Valde on it, and then you can deal with them after clearing out the other rogues. Now, I did want to make this guide as user-friendly as possible, so that even if you only have the level 1 traders or you are hurting for money, then you can still be able to go and clear this area by using this method. However, obviously this will not be foolproof and it will still be challenging and you probably will end up still dying a few times getting used to it, whether that be from the game screwing you over with the rogues facing through doors or just other general BS bugs. But for me at least, it has been the most effective way that I have found to clear this area since they did change the rogue behavior. So as mentioned, I am going to go into this raid with a weapon from a level 1 trader, being the AKS-74UN from Proper for 35k rubles. And then I do have the modification tab up on the screen so that you guys can see what I ended up purchasing for the other attachments from level one skier mechanic and proper in order to make it a little bit more viable, but still remaining totally affordable at only 65k. And that's if you don't want to add the XC1 flashlight and you just want to keep the blue laser alone, but I opted to add the flashlight which brought me to a total of 84k. Now as for the ammo, it really doesn't matter what you end up using because ultimately you do need to tap the heads of the rogues unless you are running good ammo, which you probably actually won't have access to early in the wipe. And if you don't tap the heads, then you are no doubt going to struggle because you do want to drop the rogues before they have a chance to react and aimbot you. But the good thing is that the lower tier ammo does actually have the higher damage output. It just has no pen. So that means that if you do actually hit them in the face, then you will one shot them 100% of the time. But I will mention one trick if you do happen to have proper level 2 then you can actually buy two of the 30 round 545 BT ammo packs as a barter for two large Tashankas every trader reset and that will end up being way more effective if you do get into a situation where you cannot tap the head. Now I wanted to make the video to prove to you guys that you can do this without being completely chatted up so I am going to be going into this raid with a headset, a rig to hold my two extra mags as well as two grenades and that's it. There is going to be no armor, no helmet and hopefully that will help to instill some confidence in you guys that you can also go in and clear this successfully and also get your task done. Because I am no better than you guys at this game, this isn't my job so I definitely don't get to play this game every day, I just like to make guides and also give advice to help you guys out in my spare time so definitely don't think that this is out of your league to get done. Or if you are really struggling then me and the boys do also run a lot of lighthouse so feel free to join in the discord and then we can try and help you out as well. So firstly I will show you guys the game plan during a dry run and then I will also show you guys some actual gameplay of me clearing it and then also give some tips and advice while it is happening. So here's a map of Lighthouse zoomed in on the water treatment plant area and then where we will be going is to the building 3 and then we will be staying on the outside of the blue fence. Now my PMC will be starting right by the heavy machinery on the water treatment side of the two bridges that pass by the cabins. So my PMC is here on Lighthouse and this is where the water treatment plant is and then this is where you do want to get your PMC to right here next to this heavy machinery. And these are the bridges that you do want to cross in order to get here because it is safe from the rogues regardless of whether or not you are a USEC or bear. You just have to basically watch out for other PMCs or scavs or player scavs. So now with the old road I had you guys run along this cement fence along the front of the water treatment plant towards building number one. However we are not going to be doing that anymore. Now we are going to be running to the right alongside the outside of this blue fence towards building three. And as we come up to this first building just before the cat painting on this building then you do want to have a look towards building three to see if this door is opened as that can be a sign that the ground rogues have spawned in at building 3 and that they are moving in along this building. And honestly the importance of this is just to make sure if it is closed or not because if it is open then they can shoot you as you approach and then you will be dead in the water as you are out in the open here. However in this run since it is closed then we will continue up along the left side of this pipe. Now as you get towards the end of the pipe then you will want to pull out a grenade and then lob it up over top of the fence towards the building number 3 and just underneath the door where we were checking to see if it was open or not. This will again check for ground rogues as they can be sitting just underneath this doorway that we checked earlier. Now you will hear distinct voice comms and it should help you to identify where the rogues are if they are in this area. But you can also check through this hole in the wall as well to see if there is any. But if there is none then you can just rush in through this front door and then get into position into the room where we will be heading. But if there are actually some ground rogues here then the grenade will either kill the ground rogues or they will scatter into building 3 or in around the side of it and that will give you a chance to run along the right side of the building and then jump into the side window. Now this room that we did jump into is feasible to hold, however it is not going to be the best option to start with for a solo player, 
And there is also another room down the hallway on the left hand side that you can also hold down. But this again is not going to be the best option for a solo player. However, if I am in a group, then this area is going to be totally fine to hold. But since this guide is going to be solo player friendly, then my goal is to actually clear any ground rogues in between the window that I jump through and then also the bunk bedroom on the opposite side of this building. Now, once you do sprint across, then there will be two doors and you want to go into the door on the right hand side and then close it behind you. And then you can chill at any spot in here that you do prefer. But I like to go in behind the second bunk bed. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I prefer this room over the other side to start. But the primary one is that there is only one entrance, which gives you a lot more control. And it also allows you to hear any audio cues from the rogues running up from the opposite side of the water treatment plant which will allow you to prepare on which side that they are gonna be coming from. Now, the only problem with inside of this bunk bed room is that when you have killed a handful of rogues from here, then they will actually become quite obstructive to you. And sometimes they will die standing up or slouched up against the door. So if that does happen, it definitely can slow down your reaction time because you just can't see what's going on behind them. And this will actually give the rogues that extra second to get a shot off on you. And realistically, that's all that it's going to take most of the time for them to kill you. So if this does happen, then what I do recommend is going over back to the other side that we end up jumping in through the window on in order to finish off the remaining rogues. And you can actually use either of the two rooms here that I did point out earlier. I tend to play it by ear depending on where a majority are coming from. But one tip is that the room with the window allows you to actually have an exit point if you do think that you're going to be overrun by multiple rogues at once from two different angles. And you can actually jump right out the window and it will confuse the rogues and they will not chase you outside the window, but rather try and circle around the entire building to get to you. The only issue with this window room is that PMCs or player scavs can actually sneak up to this window and then get you that way. Now, I also wanted to mention that my PMC is a bear. So as soon as I do step on the compound, then I will be viewed as hostile and then they will begin to push me. And the same thing will happen to you if you are a USEC and if you have recently killed a rogue in one of your recent raids. However, if you haven't recently killed one of them as a USEC and then you're not getting aggroed from the rogues, then you may have to actually shoot or injure or kill one of the rogues in order to get them to push you as a USEC player. Now here's map of lighthouse with all the possible rogue spawns marked on the map with an X and I did record this guide and the examples during the daytime so that you guys could easily see what I was doing and where I was at for references. But if you are going to lighthouse for the primary purpose of tasking and you are having a tough time then I do recommend trying to go at nighttime since it will reduce the rogue sight range and generally it is going to be less traffic by players and player scavs. Or if you do run into other PMCs during a nighttime raid then they will typically be passive if possible and try to avoid you since they are also likely tasking. So now in the background, I will actually show you guys the method that I use to clear out the rogues with some examples. And just for some information, you guys should expect between 7 and 12 rogues spawning into each raid. So usually I will count in my head as I do eliminate or the boys and I will call them out as we do eliminate them just so that we can keep a tally. And the other thing that you have to be aware of is that not only these 7 to 12 rogues can also spawn down here, but also AI scavs as well as the goons. And actually the goons did spawn in this raid for me as well. So not only did I take out the 11 rogues, but I also took out the 3 goons using the exact same method. Now once you do get into the bunk bedroom and then you get into position, then you will want to listen for the audio cues like the rogues footsteps, bushes, and metal stairs since that will let you know which way that they're going to be coming from. And it will also allow you to pre-aim the door so that you can head tap them when they do open it. Now another benefit to the bunk bedroom is that the rogues will all basically enter in from the same area on the right hand side of the door because for some reason if they are coming from that left side then they will close the door just to reopen it from the right side rather than swinging around the forklift and then trying to left hand swing you. Now the nice thing about this is that when they are closing the door and then moving across the door then you can actually sometimes head tap them through the door. And then the other benefit of trying to head tap them through the door when they are moving from left to right is that now instead of guessing where their head level is going to be, you will now know exactly where the rogue's head is going to be. So as soon as you see them go to open up the door, then you can actually be lined up perfectly. And then it should be basically an easy tap every time. And that should be the case unless, as I mentioned earlier, the bodies do pile up in front of you. Now, as mentioned earlier, if the bodies do pile up in front of you, then basically you want to listen for a gap in the audio cues and the rogues pushing you for you to be able to safely move over to the other side and get into position. Now, as mentioned earlier, also, you want to be aware of the rogues phasing through the door and then blasting you. So usually if they are right on my tail, then I will not try and shut the door. Instead, I will just leave it open and then pre-fire a little bit since in my testing, closing the door on the rogues is actually what makes them phase through it. And it it actually makes it way worse when they hit that door in the time frame right before it actually closes then they will basically phase through it they can see you perfectly but you can't really see them now i also recommend that you use your downtime in between waves of rogues to top up your mags or heal if need be but just be sure to keep an ear out just because if they do catch you mid reload then you will be dead 99 percent of the time 
realistically if they catch you mid reload then the only thing that you will be able to do is try and run at them in order to push their gun to the side by barrel stuffing them but it definitely does not seem to work as effective on ai as it does on players so like i said 99 percent of the time that you will be dead now unfortunately one thing to be aware of is that the player scav armies will be coming to hoard you once they do load in basically every player scav typically always comes to the water treatment plant and realistically because their play style is going to be unpredictable then the best advice that i have for you is to try to let them not know that you're there and hope that the greed gets the best of them and then you can kill them as they're going to be deep in a pile of rogue bodies trying to loot now, as mentioned earlier, I went into the raid with no armor or helmet and basically a CQB gun. Now, this is not really concerning because if you do successfully hold this bunk bedroom and clear the rogues, then you will be able to grab either an armored tack rig or regular armor as well as a backpack and also a helmet from the rogues. And it will basically be untouched because you're just going to be tapping faces mostly. And usually you will also have a rogue that has an AK-104 with a Valde scope with PS ammo for you to pick up and also to use to scout the rooftops of building number one or two just in case some rogues have bugged out on the roofs and they won't push you. Now one of the most problematic things of the whole water treatment plant is these bugged rogues that are going to be up on top of the rooftops because they are absolutely broken so you definitely have to watch out when fighting them because they have an absolute fire hose of death and laser aim. So to check on top of building number one from building three, then I actually recommend going up to the second floor. And then inside of this side room, there is going to be a cot that you can jump up onto. And then you can lean peek over top of this metal barrier to have some cover. And then you can see if there are any rogues that are going to be up on top of building number one. If they are there, then you can try and take them out with the PS ammo and the AK-104. But just remember that you definitely want to be careful and you don't want to stay lean peeking for too long because they will laser you from there. Now, while running Lighthouse this wipe and also while testing for this video, then I definitely noticed that if you do go into the bunk bedroom that the rooftop rogues will end up bugging out a lot less. So there may actually be an anchor point that you do hit when crossing over to that room that will prevent the rooftop rogues from being bugged. So just be aware that if you or your squad do end up staying on the window side of building number three, that you may end up having to deal with these rooftop rogues being bugged more frequently. Now for building two, then I will usually jump out the back window that we started this whole process from and then take a left and go towards the end of building number three. And then we are going to be slowly peeking towards building number two, looking up towards the machine gun. And then if that's clear, then you want to continue to slowly and peek towards the metal stairs to see if there is any bugged rogues up there. Now, as for building number three, then you will know if there is a bugged rogue up on top because you will hear the continuous running on metal as you are clearing the rest of the rogues. And then another trick that you can do is to use your grenades or flashbangs to clear the roofs of the buildings as you do move up close to them because if you do throw a grenade up to the rooftop then you will get a voice com from a rogue if they are up there. Now after doing all of this then you should be clear from the danger of the rogues and you can just run about the water treatment plant and get your tasks done but just be aware that AI and player scavs as well as other PMCs can be creeping in around here and trying to do the same thing. And if you do happen to run into another rogue that is bugged at some point or a ground rogue or something that just didn't push you like they should have, then basically just try to play your cover and then use your right angle peaks. And sometimes if other PMCs are also trying to push the water treatment plant from the building number one side, so the opposite side of the water treatment plant, then you can have the rogues actually split in two. So half of them will try to take on them and then half will try and take on you. So it will seem like you have less rogues than normal, but usually what will happen is that water treatment plant is a little bit more difficult to push from that side. So typically they will end up killing those PMCs and then they will just end up pushing over to you later on in the raid. Or if they do happen to kill all the rogues over on that side, then you will just end up probably running into them towards building number two or in the middle of the water treatment plant. So just be aware of that. And just that so you guys know, if you do want to practice or attempt this method in an offline raid, then you can do that. But in order to spawn the rogues, then you do have to select the enable bosses button since apparently they are considered bosses. But that can also mean that the goons will have a 50% chance of being at the water treatment plant since they do have a spawn here and also one up at the blue chalet. So they will be at one or the other location. And to be honest, I actually find that offline raids are harder to clear the water treatment plant since you will have 11 to 17 different rogue spawns in an offline raid, plus also the goons. Whereas in an online raid, usually it will only be between 7 and 11, but you do also have the risk of other PMCs and also player scavs. So hopefully you guys found this guide useful in learning how to deal with the new rogue behavior in patch 14. I hope that it will help you guys to clear the water treatment plant, so that you can go ahead and finish all of your different tasks on Lighthouse. If you guys have any suggestions or comments or advice, then definitely leave them down in the comment section, as it may help somebody else who is reading them, and it may touch on something that I wasn't able to speak about in this guide. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching this video, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. 
So what you're seeing on the screen right now is just a couple of my different social links in case you guys wanted to connect more easily. I am primarily streaming on Twitch now multiple nights a week. So if you do want to connect with me or my community, that would probably be the easiest way to do so. And if you do come over to the Twitch and you want to join the Discord community, then just type exclamation point Discord or cord in the chat in order to get an invite link. And if you don't use Twitch, then I do have a link in the picture as well as a link below in the description. And we are growing and currently have an active and welcoming community with people of all experience and skill levels. So there will always be someone who could help to answer any questions that you may have. As always, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.